morning, Commissioners. Neil Fuji with the Planning Branch. Um, and this morning, you know, I um, wanted to give you all an update on, on phase two of the Central Oahu non potable Water Master Plan, which um, um, was initiated by the Commission. Um, this is actually um, phase two of um, a rep uh, the, the plan itself. And it's not um, your traditional uh, water master plan. Really, it's uh, it started off as an appraisal level investigation, and, and um, phase two was further investigation, looking at frameworks of, of opportunities. So I think we may have briefed you on the, the first plan, but um, I'm going to go through this really quickly because it's lunchtime. So, um, <coughs> so quickly, a little bit of background, some objectives, uh, looking at the supply and demand, what are, what the opportunities are, and what some of the challenges are. So, just to refresh your memory, this is kind of the project area. Um, um, which covers from, you know, Waihewa in the north down to uh, Waipahu in the south and Kunia in the west through Nilinani. Uh, so big project area, a uh, lot of landowners, um, <coughs> a lot of water sources, so it's fairly complex. <coughs> we're looking mainly at the lands that were zoned for agriculture for non-potable use, right? So um, again, this is the phase two of the Central Oahu non-potable Water Master Plan. Phase one was completed uh, in January 2013. So it's on our website, and it, the first one looks like this. It looked pretty much the same, so, but the inside's different. Um, <clears throat> so the again, the reason the commission was interested, uh, just for background for you folks, is um, you know some of the land use has changed since you know sugar went out, and um, the commission we're trying to promote the policy of highest and best use while recognizing the benefits of um, coordinated regional planning. So again, we um, wanted to look at really the agriculture uh, in the area, what the new interests were, um, going back and re-looking at the supply and demand with more information, um, and coming up with a framework of opportunities which should not be pres pro <coughs> sorry, prescriptive, giving policymakers some options uh, to make decisions. So. In phase two, um, we asked the consultants, um, Ron and Caldwell, to refine non-potable water supply and demand estimates, um, conduct additional stakeholder consultation, focus on non-potable demands, which are using potable sources, so we could get off the potable and onto the non-potable, um, and develop a menu of options for decision makers, like I mentioned earlier. Um, again, to promote the commission's policy of highest and best use. Water, in fact, all groundwater, and these are the corresponding service areas. Um, this is the Waiholi Ditch, this hatched area, um, <clears throat> and then uh, again, all these other different service areas. To note that some of the areas don't have, um, may not have some water, these kind of green areas over here. So, um, during the investigation, using new information and, and getting data from the uh, stakeholder interviews, um, these are the results of. Oops, did I miss something? Here we go, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. These are the results of looking at the demands in the project area. And um, so as a, through the phase one and phase two um, investigation, these three kind of um, key distinct areas were identified as uh, opportunity or demand areas. So Kunia Road Corridor, former Galbraith Estate, and the Kamehameha Highway Corridor. Um, so these are the current allocations um, for these different areas, and we'll, we'll go over them in a little bit more detail, um, and based on uh, water use permits, and this do not include uh, Waiholi Ditch. And these are the future demands based on the agricultural lands, the acreage, uh, and really applying a duty of 2,500 gallons uh, per acre per day, which was uh, out of Waiholi and we thought reasonable to use in this climate and area. So these are the supply sources um, in the area, all non-potable um, and potential future supply to meet some of this demand. So, um, so these are some of the demands that we maybe could see matched uh, with those, um, I'm sorry, these are the supplies that we could match with the demands uh, shown on the earlier slide, right? 
Uh, just in case you're wondering why Hill Reservoir, that number was taken from a 25% of the flow through. So um, just kind of a, kind of a, I won't say arbitrary number, but just an amount of water that may be taken out of the stream at some point. Um, qualifications on, on the uh, demands, um, let's see, they seem kind of high compared to the allocations, but you know, demand figures um, should not be viewed as a maximum. You know, we haven't um, taken out some of these areas that would not be needed uh, irrigation. Um, a, lot, a lot of the demands are attributed to the Cunha Corridor. <coughs> Uh, demander as you guys saw a little bit slide before this um, again these are the key opportunities that came out of these these two phases of study um, and I'll kind of go over them one by one this is a map of the project area and uh, generally delineated by these rectangles the different um, uh, demand areas so this big one here is we'll call it the Cunia Road the corridor this little one up here is up in the former Galbraith Estates. And then this one over here is uh, the Kamehameha Highway Corridor. And they all overlap because um, because of the, the, the sources are kind of, they're using, potentially using the same sources. So this looks like, looks a little funny, but um, they are distinct areas. These are um, data, data tables um, that were um, completed in phase two uh, analysis of additional data uh, evalu evaluated multiple factors and there's like a handle I think just to give you an idea of what some of these fields are and it's fairly complicated there are 15 pages of this that our consultant went through so fairly extensive analysis um, let's see so I'll, I'll go over it just a lot but um, this this resulted in identifying the non potable supply options for these three areas so um, Cunha Road Corridor, I'll go over quickly with some maps to follow. Key Stakeholders, Agribusiness Development Corporation, Cunha Water Association, uh, Cunha Water Cooperative, U.S. Army, Aqua Engineers, uh, Environmental Services, uh, and Hawaii Department of Ag. And they're really the, um, the key stakeholders in all of these areas are um, those with significant control of the sources, or they could be landowners, um, ditch operator owners, or regulatory bodies. Uh, demand in this area, Kinnear Road Corridor is mainly agriculture with the uh, A golf course. And some of the supply options to meet these <coughs> demands, the ditch, Wahala ditch, wastewater treatment plant, both at Schofield and Wahiawa, um, possibly stormwater, and possibly the Wahiawa Reservoir. So I'm going real quick. So these series of maps show some options, and, and this is the, uh, call it the Kunia Road pipeline with different options um, connecting. Here we'll see, here's the Schofield, Wastewater treatment, here's Waiwa. So one option is to get water from there, put it in the pipeline, the non-existent pipeline, by the way, <coughs> and, and bring it down there. <coughs> here's another one connecting up north to Waiwa, up in the, uh, here's a stormwater connection to, this is, This could uh, potentially gather a lot of stormwater during, during uh, rain events up at the school field, um, actually the Wheeler Army Airfield. <coughs> and there's another option connecting to the, um, to the reservoir itself. And all of this is in the report. I think Katie passed out a CD. And then we, we haven't put it on our website, but it's gonna be available soon out there. Um, okay, so those are some options. Um, and I'll go quickly. Um, we'll, we'll switch over to the former Gilbert Estates. Uh, again, key stakeholders, some of them are, are common to, to a few of these. And uh, the different supply options. Now up there is all agriculture. Uh, mainly under control of the Agribusiness Development Corporation, a little bit of OHA, but they, what they want to do is um, jumpstart agriculture up there. So they have some demands. Um, so map of the area. Um, this is really this, the, the, uh, the, the agriculture irrigable area, or the ar arable area, let's say. Um, and these are some planned reservoirs up there. Um, now this is the pipeline uh, from <coughs> the wastewater treatment plant up to uh, one of their reservoirs and into their uh, distribution system. So I'm going to go th through some options um, here, coming back down, connecting up to the school field. So possibly taking, uh, receiving water, uh, treated wastewater from both treatment plants. Um, here's a connection to the stormwater, potential stormwater. Uh, and here is another alignment 
uh, up around here to avoid uh, certain easements. And then um, this is another option, just diverting the stream up here and diverting the lake to another uh, non-potable water supply option. And then last, this is uh, lastly, Kamehameha Highway Corridor. So again, these are three of the main key uh, demand areas. Again, you'll see very similar stakeholders. Um, demand is a little bit different here. You got big sports field down there. You got some landscaping, and you got uh, golf course. Uh, and supply options are pretty common. And there's this one with the potential for Koa Ridge, the, the new development coming up there, uh, treated wastewater in the future. So. Again, going over the maps, Cam Highway Pipeline, um, all the way from Waihewa Treatment Plant, all the way down to Waikele Golf Course. Um, and you'll see some of the features over here. So this is taking water from the treatment plant. This one connects up to uh, possibly the reservoir water. Um, here's getting water from Schofield and Schofield Treatment Plant, bringing it all the way down. Uh, and so it's, as you come along here, there's some ag, there's uh, the uh, Central Oahu Regional Park, you know, golf course. So there are a lot of opportunities to, uh, for non potable use. Um, here is, what's this one? Oh, okay, so connect up to both treatment plants, wastewater treatment plants. Um, you know, you got a little hook up here to the stormwater, or uh, rainfall catchment. And here's a potential possible if this, um, if and when the Coal Ridge um, development gets built and they need to um, uh, treat their wastewater, there's, there's a potential for that coming into, into the pipeline as well. So what are the challenges um, to these potential uh, opportunities? So there are significant challenges uh, that need to be addressed before any of these opportunities can move ahead towards implementation, right? So if you look at these, um, there's some some economic um, challenges, you know, um, high expected capital costs, as you can expect. Um, there's uh, competitive, competitive pricing issues. Um, so lack, there's currently, we discovered lack of coordination between the key stakeholders. There is coordination, but there could be, uh, there could be a lot better. Um, and then there's some um, public safety health concerns, um, acceptance of recycled, recycled water for irrigation of crops. Um, edible crops and concerns of applying um, recycled water over potable aquifers, which is the these new emerging uh, uh, pharmaceuticals and uh, personal care products getting into the aquifer. That's a concern with some folks. Um, what are the benefits? So again, we're trying to promote highest and best use of water, uh, maximizing the non-potable and reserving the potable for, for drinking and other higher uses. Um, so we, um, you know, just another benefit is promoting uh, agriculture in Central Oahu, which I, I think a lot of people want to do. We could improve water quality in the reservoir by um, uh, eliminating or reducing some of that uh, wastewater discharge going into there and resulting in also um, improving uh, water quality in the uh, receiving waters. And then, you know, with, with the collaboration, stakeholder collaboration, we can leverage funds and resources. So trying to get more people uh, involved and, and sharing the resources to get these done. So some of the next steps, you know, stakeholder, uh, I keep mentioning stakeholder, collaboration is essential for implementation. Um, <clears throat> so you know, some of these current uh, studies or investigations may provide scientific evidence for the safety of applying recycled water over potable aquifers. I won't get into these, but uh, you got questions asking. Um, we're going to continue um, education and outreach. Um, very key component uh, for achieving public acceptance of uh, recycled water for irrigation. And then integrating this uh, information in these two reports into the Board of Water Supplies, Watershed, uh, watershed Management Plans, or actually Watershed Development Plans for the, for the county, uh, city county of Honolulu, as well as the Department of Health Water Quality Plan. And that's the last slide.